A vertical radio mast, PQ, stands on flat horizontal ground. So PQ is the vertical radio mast, and the orange triangle is the horizontal ground. It is supported by three cables, which join the top of the mast Q to the points A, B, and C on the horizontal ground. So this is the top of the mast Q, and this is one of the cables, AQ. This is another cable, QC, and another cable, QB. Each cable is 52 meters long, and the mast is 48 meters high. So AQ is 52 meters, QC is 52 meters, QB is 52 meters, and QP is 48 meters. Part 1. Find the common distances from P to each of the points A, B, and C. So we want to find the distance between A and P, P and C, and P and B. So we will find the distance from P to A using the right angle triangle APQ. So we're going to find the distance from P to A using the right angle triangle APQ. So it's very hard to see, but this is actually a right angle triangle because this is a vertical mast and this is the horizontal ground. So the angle at P must be a right angle. Therefore, we can use Pythagoras' theorem, which is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So we label our triangle, which I've drawn out here separately. The 52 is going to be the longest side, so that's going to be labeled as the C. And then the other sides, it doesn't matter which way we label them, once we label them A and B. So PQ, again, is 48. And we don't know what AP is, so we can just leave it as A. AP is what we're trying to find. So C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So if the C for 52, the B for 48. 52 squared equals A squared plus 48 squared. We're going to bring the 48 squared over the other side. It becomes minus 48 squared. So a squared equals 52 squared minus 48 squared. We're going to bring the squared over the other side. It becomes square root. So a is equal to the square root of 52 squared minus 48 squared. And the square root of 52 squared minus 48 squared is 20 meters. Now you can do this any method that you want using Pythagoras' theorem. Part 2. Given that AC is 38 metres and BA is 34 metres, find BC correct to one decimal place. So AC is 38 metres and BA is 34 metres. We need to find BC correct to one decimal place. So we're trying to find this length here. So I'm going to draw out the orange triangle ABC separately down here. So we have A, B, C. We know that AB is 34. We know that AC is 38. And we do not know what BC is. In the triangle ABC, so ABC, let the angles X, Y and Z be as shown. So remember we have the bottom of the vertical mast, so the vertical mast is QP, so the bottom of it is right here, and it's joined up to A, so AP is this line here, PB is this line here, and PC is this line here. I know it looks different to the original diagram, but imagine that you're staring at it from above, you're staring at it from up here, like you are bored looking down on it. So we have the angle X that's formed between the two arms A and B. We have the angle Z formed between the two arms B and C, and the angle Z formed between the two arms A and C. We can use the cosine rule to find angle X and then angle Y and therefore deduce or figure out angle Z. This is because we know that the angles around a point add up to 360 degrees. So if we can work out angle X and work out angle Y, we can add them together and take them away from 360 degrees to leave us with angle Z. 
then at last we can get BC. We can find the distance from B to C. So we will use angle Z to figure out the length BC. P is the point at the center. So we have the point P, the bottom of the mast, is at the very center. It's not written in, but that's point P. So we're going to take the triangle ABX and we're going to label it A, B, and C. And then we're going to substitute our values into the cosine rule. So remember, the triangle ABX is not a right angle triangle. It's a non-right right angle triangle, so we're not going to use Pythagoras' theorem. So there's no hypotenuse as such. So the cosine rule is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos of a. So the capital letter in our formula is an a, which means that the angle that we're using to substitute into the formula must be labeled angle a. Now, we're not actually subbing in a value, we're looking for a value, we're looking for the angle. But either way, this still has to be labelled as angle A. The angle that we're using needs to be labelled angle A. So therefore, the side that's opposite that needs to be lowercase a. So the a squared becomes 34 squared. Now, it doesn't matter which way you label the other sides and angles, but they get labelled B and C. So this side here is going to be labelled as lowercase b and that happens to be opposite angle B. And this side here is gonna be labeled as lowercase c. So we're gonna call this angle C. So the B squared becomes 20 squared. The C squared becomes 20 squared. Minus two times B, which is 20, times C, which is 20. And cos of A becomes cos of X. So next, we're going to bring the 34 squared over the other side and it becomes minus 34 squared. The 20 squared stays where it is. The 20 squared stays where it is. So we've got minus 34 squared plus 20 squared plus 20 squared. Then we're going to bring the minus 2 times 20 times 20 cos of x over the other side. It will become positive 2 times 20 times 20 cos of x. And then we divide across by what's in front of the cos of x, which is minus 2 times 20 times 20. So we end up with minus 34 squared plus 20 squared plus 24, 20 squared, divided by 2 by 20 by 20. And putting that into the calculator gives you minus 0 0.445. So remember, cos of x is equal to minus 0 0.445. And we don't know the angle, so we have to use the inverse function. So we press shift on the calculator. So we press shift and cos, so cos to the power of minus 1 is going to be 116.42 degrees. So angle x is 116.42 degrees. Now this might seem like a tricky way to do this question, and it's probably not the way you were taught to do it. So I'm going to do it out slightly different underneath. So we have 34 squared equals 20 squared plus 20 squared minus 2 times 20 times 20 cos of x. We want to solve for cos of x. So 34 squared is 1156, 20 squared is 400, 20 squared is 400, minus 2 by 20 by 20 is minus 800, stick on the cos of x. So bring the 400 over the equal sign, it becomes minus 400, do that with the other 400. So you get 1,156 minus 400 minus 400 equals minus 800 cos of x. 1,156 minus 400 minus 400 is 356 equals minus 800 cos of x. Since the minus 800 is stuck onto the cos of x, we're going to divide by minus 800. So 356 divided by minus 800 is equal to cos of x. And that gives us minus 0 0.445 cos of x, which is what we had up here. And the inverse of that is going to be 116.42 degrees. So obviously this is a much longer version. So this would be a better method to do if you can. But if it's too complicated, then do the longer version, which is a little bit easier.